We are back on the build and a question was asked why I chose epoxy over PVA. And if you remember most of these uh, videos, PVA was used really throughout the, the model with the exception of areas that I wanted extra strength. Because I live in the tropics and we have uh, actually significant uh, changes in humidity, um, there are certain parts that I will want to strengthen and epoxy um, will give me that strength. All my life I've had uh, fiberglass boats and of course West Epoxy is the fundamental building block of the repairs that I've done to all those boats. Anyway, enough of that and let's get back to the build. We've taken off the clamps and the piece has actually taken on the shape of the hull. Maybe it needs a little more twist and we may sand, give this a little more angle. So we're going to put a little more heat on it, again just to dry it out some more. But certainly it's fitting nicely down inside here. And you keep that butt joint nice and tight. I will um, just say that you should be careful with heat. That remember the heat is applying to all the pieces of wood, including the ones that are already stuck. So I tend to apply heat in for not too long, maybe 20 seconds at most, um, and do it repeatedly a few times until I'm convinced the piece is dry. Then on to stick and clamp. Um, again, you are seeing the first piece on, and um, if I had to be critical, that first join perhaps um, is a little too pointed, and I'll try and fix that with a sander. Um, on to now to the starboard side and I move that um, square 10 inch um, sorry that 11 inch block so that it span the two planks more evenly and out come all the clamps and I have to say with the exception of that first butt join um, the first limber streak really went in quite good. I tried to make up the slivers to fit in the limber streaks the way they were shown in the book, but I couldn't get a pencil to get down in that tiny little triangle. Um, so I used my tried and true method of cutting down a piece and just adjusting and sanding, adjusting and sanding until I got it perfectly right. Proxon should really give me um, <laughs> a lifetime supply of pen sanders because I sure use it almost every day in this build in some way, shape or form. Um, the triangular pieces were put on with PVA again to give you working time and um, again using epoxy here would have been no benefit at all. Because I put the um, first limber streaks on with epoxy, I actually was able to get a, re a really nice tight fit. Um, and again, I could be critical, but I'm not totally unhappy with how the final product came out. Now we're going to fit the second limber streak. And so we mark the end of the first, and we've tapered this down to, this is four feet down and down to two inches at the end. So we're just doing a trial fit and that really fits quite nicely inside there. The butt joint is right here. So we've cut that one and fitted it and the next one will be 24 feet and then we'll have a small piece at the top at the bow and I'm um, back to using PVA because I achieved what I wanted which was with the first two limber streaks um, epoxy based would give the 
the keels you know, the keel of the boat um, beef it up so if I have any variations in humidity I think that's enough to take it away and then the PVA will work fine as it has for the entire build so far. The challenge with working inside the hull remains um, finding innovative clamps and there's just no end of seeking solutions to this problem. I've used every trick in the book and still looking for solutions in the bow. Cleaned up the starboard side. Now we start on the port side and we've put the second plank in. As I'm about to put the last limber streak, last of the second limber streak on, um, I found that when I tried to line up the butt join that uh, it wasn't lining square even though I cut it square on the table saw and that's because of the bend of the last piece. So I need to, to really fit that uh, butt join perfectly before tapering here. So we're still going to cut it on the table saw but then adjust it um, with the sander. At this stage it's now second nature, um, know exactly what to do, how to adjust it, um, how to make up the strake, how to sand it. Um, and you'll find that by the time you've installed the second strake, um, this just really is quite easy. One of my more innovative clamps, it's a pointed vice grip and with the the only care you have to have is when it where it clamps on the wood that you need to put um, either a slim piece of wood or a piece of cloth to make sure it doesn't scar the, um, the timber but really it worked out very very well. All complete just need to clean up and sharpen sharpen and soften the various lines that um, we've been instructed to differentiate. Well that turned out to be quite a, a bit more challenging than I thought it would. Um, I had to cut out two of the limber strakes so some of you would be justified when you said why are you using epoxy instead of PV um, but my original reasoning still stands and I do plan to use epoxy in other parts of the external hull again to hold everything together and to give me that extra oomph that I want on the model and then for the other 95% of the model it will be stuck with PVA. Um, the inner um, strake um, was really where most of the challenge was the outer strake was much easier to do and I suppose just getting used to everything and getting to understand all the terms and, and how you hold the whole thing together really made a huge difference. So I'm going to bring this to an end and um, not sure where I'm moving off on the next video but <laughs> you'll see in due course. So see you later and keep modeling.